Uh, so Craig, you know, there's this new modern thing where, you know, people interview the interviewers, that kind of thing, or whatever they say. So I'm going to be interviewed by the one and only Craig Harris, musician extraordinary. I, I keep on pumping you up if you want me to. You pump yeah. me up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them <laughs> You know, uh, I guess you have the project people wouldn't may know you by popular right now. It's only because it's out there. Is your, you did the, the score for um, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, the yeah, film, Anthony, the successful right, film. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, yeah. So, uh, no, no, my name is Craig Harris. I'm interviewing Mr. Anthony Sloan here today. Anthony has been, uh, uh, I guess you would call a media journalist for years in, in the diaspora. And I mean the diaspora because Anthony has always been concerned about the whole what do they call us? The third column over here, whatever that, that ridiculous stuff it is. Uh, but, no, but Anthony has always been interested in the plight of African people, and and to, and really get on that we're all human, but other people understand that we're all human. Mm -hmm. I think it's just he's been sincere about that for years. So I really like to start about like uh, we haven't seen you in a while, and uh, I mean I mean like I'm from your days at WBAI where you were well, program director. I was I was I was the arts director, which made me the music director, director of drama and literature, and director of uh, like the the, the the critics, like you know, dance, uh, film, right. whatever have you. It was a big responsibility. And that's how we came, you know. That's how we got we got we got to know each other. Just be, and also being colleagues in in the in the, stri in the struggle for justice. Actually, and, we knew each other before BAI. Yeah. Because when I got out of graduate school, which I didn't take the degree, first thing I did was was well, not the first and second thing I did was to be the stage manager, whatever you call it, for R&B Ensemble. Okay, okay, with you say Seku 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 That's where I first... Did you, know, did, you know, did you know Seku? How did you, how did you meet Seku Sudiata, the great poet? No, what happened? How did I get... How did I do that? I don't know, somebody hired me. They just said, hey, we need a stage manager. Mm -hmm. And so when you all, when they had the group, group groups together, you know, mm -hmm. then... The, 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 she was in R&B Ensemble. But but after, through, after that, that's how I met you. I'm sorry. I, I, no, but I, I knew you. I was going to come there. You know, yeah. there was a great poet, Sekou Sundiata, we both loved and dearly, I worked oh, with him. And uh, so Anthony, I would see you there, and uh, then I see uh, the radio station, and you've always been like, you know, just, why, what, what, is, what, what, what runs you with this thing? Why? Why radio? You know, mm. why radio? Radio, especially at that time. Okay. Mm. Why, radio? why radio? Okay, here's the thing. Radio to me is an empty tube. You can put anything down it, okay? Also, radio is about sound. You know, I, 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 the, the visual thing arrests you. I tell people all the time, hey, if you have a TV program on, you know, you can, uh, if you turn off the uh, sound and you just have the picture, you may or may not know what's going on. But if you turn off the picture and you listen to the sound, oh, you're going to get like a, a 95, 85% of, of what's, what's going on. So sound is most important, or, or the, the oral, the going into the ear is most important. But more than that, I think that what happens when you have a visual, people make a, what, a, 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 a judgment on you. So if, if um, I remember, Frederick K. Price died, uh, died a few, or uh, whatever ago, uh, the, the Reverend, uh, Dr. Frederick K. Price, a Christian preacher, whatever happened, he used to have this TV program, right? I remember seeing one time, he said something very interesting, because he had these suits, these three-piece suits and stuff like that, and he told this congregant, you, you like the way I look, don't you? You know, and you, you listen to, and he said, you listen to my message because I look good. He had a little afro over there. <laughs> he said, I look good. If I was here in the iron lung, you wouldn't be listening to me. Think about that, you know? Think about that. Okay. The reason why people are not with some of these, you know, the, the reason why somebody like Obama was the whole package because he looked good, he had that baritone voice, and that's the other thing, voice and all the rest of that stuff. So if, if sound is very important. You know, I can go on and on this because I can see, like, the reason why Ronald Reagan, I'm doing policy, was so important is because he started in radio. And you can see what the VU meters, you know, like that on the mm -hmm. stage, you can see when he talked, it was like unbelievable, just right like that. Right. Just, it's just, the, 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 the meter would just be in that certain, hub, that sweet spot, right? Frequency. Yeah, yeah the frequency, the sweet spot. Mondia was running against him, I had to take down the feed. That's when I noticed, and Mondale was all over the place. So not only did he look bad, he sounded bad, even okay. though you didn't know he sounded bad. Right. The classic example, they say, if you listen to the, uh, the, the, the Kennedy-Nixon debates, they say, if you watched it, Kennedy won. But if you just heard it, Nixon won. Okay. But uh, I, I just, I've just always been involved in radio. Uh, um, I shouldn't say that. I, I'm not involved with theater first, that's right. But 
I don't know. I just love radio. I, okay. I mean, it's not judgmental. All right. So theater first. So theater was like. So what was your what was your duties in theater? How did you what were you doing in the, in the theater? That was quite. Um, uh, I was walking on the Lower East Side one time. A attorney, my, my brother of mine, came. He was, I saw him. He said, "Oh, he said, hey, they're starting a new theater company. Uh, it's called Negro Ensemble Company." Okay, Thirteenth Street. Uh, that was that was. Street. There, there was, yeah, well, uh, 8th Street, but the uh, Second Avenue, the St. Mark's yeah, Theater. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it, it, I didn't know anything about it. And he said, You'd be really good, because I've turned about to know me. He said, But you would be really good. You should you should try. Why don't you write a letter? Now, I'm from the I'm from the South of France. I'm from the Patterson Project. You know, I'm 17 years old. Uh, yeah, well, actually, I was 16 when he, no, no, I was 17. Yeah, I was, whatever I was, no, I was 16. And uh, so a ghetto kid writing a letter. Uh, to a theater company. Anyway, I wrote it because it's my fraternity brother. They asked me to do it, so I did right. it. And I sent it to him. And Ron Mack sent me back a letter. This is letter writing days, you know, zip codes and all that stuff. And he said, well, we're not, we're, 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 we, we have a class right now. We're not, op we, we don't have anything there. But as soon as we have another class open, we'll, we'll contact you. And lo and behold, at the, about, about November of that year, when I had turned 17, they, uh, they, he called me back. So I was a part of the, what's called the intermediate acting class of the, of the uh, Negro Ensemble Company. But we just didn't act. We were building sets, like we did Congies Harbor, we lights, everything. You know, our training, we had you know, karate training, dance training. You know, Lewis Johnson was our dance teacher. All kinds of people came through there, you know? Was so, that Robert Hooks? Was, yeah, 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 uh, Robert, Rob, 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 Robert yeah, Hooks. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the our Negro Ensemble Company was, was founded by three people, right? Uh, Bobby Hooks, uh, Douglas Turner Ward. Right. Okay, those are the main thing. Then Gerald S. Crone is the white guy. He was the money guy. Okay. He was so his his in fact his office was up there on Broadway. His office is up on, on Broadway. Okay. So so you would never really see him, but those are the three people that started okay. New York Ensemble Company. And um, in fact, I talked to. In fact, let me just say one thing. So when I came in there, uh, they hadn't produced anything. So the first play they produced is when I was there, you know, in the, in the company. So right. the first place they produced this thing called Song of the Lusitanian Bogey. Yeah. So they, uh, directed by Michael Schultz. Yeah. The music was done by Coach Taylor Perkins. That's right. Exactly. To this day, I will tell you, I've seen a lot of theater. I've seen a lot of films. To this day, that is the best play I've ever seen. And, and was, it, was it documented? Is it, did anybody film it or anything? No, no, no. We wasn't doing film back then. They didn't film it? No, 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 no. You know, that's, that's this whole thing of, uh, uh, what's it, uh, Graham, just, he was in, uh, Moses Gunn, the great Moses Gunn, he was, it was amazing, it right. was amazing. All those people, Denise Nichols, yeah. uh, Rosalind Cash, oh, that was the, the company, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was in intermediate acting class, right? I was the second youngest. The other, there was a guy that was some uh, months younger than I am. But I was the second youngest and in the class. And it, most of these people were like, I want to say it this way, but the most people are, are, are better off. Then nobody came from the ghetto. All right. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But you were acting then, you're saying? You were, you I was were, in the acting class. Okay, you were, you, okay, you weren't, you weren't doing uh, backstage work. You were going to be on stage. No, no, the class, we did everything. Okay, okay let, let me continue. Right. So now, so uh, we, had to, we had to do, uh, we had to do a performance. You know, we, the class had to do a, a play to show, show what we did, right? And I guess I have this sort of weird I don't know, vibe. And one of the, uh, Kashasha, one of the other students in the class, she uh, wrote a play called The Last Dragon. Not to confuse with Michael, with that whole thing. This is just her play about this dragon got captured and basically it's all black people being, right. you know, whatever, have you. And, and I was the title character, The Last Dragon, mm -hmm. right? So we did this the whole thing, da 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 da. At the end, it was very strange because I, I'm, not a, I'm, not, I'm not a very good actor unless I have a lot, a lot of time with it, right? And I didn't really like, I, I, I shouldn't say that. It was a weird thing because after the play, you know, you have the green room and then people come, they come and, and they, you know, greet you. And this, I clearly remember this because uh, you have that picture up there. This girl, I guess she, I'm going to say she's about 13, came to me. She asked for my autograph. I had never anything like that. And I felt very strange about that. I was like, what? I, I didn't understand. But that was a theater tradition, you know, autographs. And I really wasn't into it, right? So anyway, later on, so, so, so we kept on going. And I believe that I could, I couldn't act whatever it is. But then because we do this technical work, and they um, was it was Michael Michael Schultz was our first acting teacher for our class, mm -hmm. right? And then we had Luther James because Michael went off to Hollywood. Then we had Luther James. Then oh before yeah Luther James and Buddy Butler. It's great. I love Buddy Butler, right? Uh, and then uh, finally we had it with Ed Cambridge, the great Ed Cambridge, and he uh, yeah, he went on to Hollywood to train all those Hollywood actors at the time. But that was that was the, that was the class. But what they did, Michael, Michael and Buddy came to me and they said, "No, Anthony, 
you know, your acting is great, blah, blah, blah. But we need people specifically behind the camera. That was the phrase they used. Mm -hmm. And they say, I was just helping hide, hanging lights or whatever I was doing because we had to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to stop this here.